Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. I ain't got a chin right now, so the hood's up. <laughs> Guess like that, but nah, nobody um, is gonna judge you. Relax. <laughs> Welcome to Play by Play podcast, bro. Pleasure to have you. Ryan, want to get straight into it? Tell us from the moment you were born, first touch on the ball to where you are right now. Obviously, you grew up in Salford, also known as the hood. There, where it's ingrained with different diversity, different cultures. What was the upbringing like? What was your childhood like? Um, how did this, the football world start for you? I'd say football was my, my, my first love. Um, that was sort of what I've, I've always just loved doing from being, from being young. And in a way, it sort of, um, it just sort of naturally happened. It wasn't like, um, anything with to do with, my parents it was sort of just that just naturally grew towards just playing football and then um as I gradually got older I think the passion became more for football and then people were noticing that I was talented but I never took football serious if that makes sense. I've just done it because just for the love and um I think until I got around about sixteen I think that's when I started to realise myself that, okay, this is what I'm good at. And then obviously now I'm actually playing football on a good level. So, yeah. Tell us more with what you went through in terms of like, um, obviously you've had trials for, for the likes of Man United, Burnley, them big clubs. Okay? How did that transition for you and when did it click going from a street footballer playing in a grassroots football as well to more of a like, professional environment and what lesson did you learn from it? So when I first went to United I was around about 10 I was just at the time I was just playing for my local team um, that was just literally um, obviously people in my area people that I know and to be honest the, the, the team that I was playing for the lads were a year above me school wise because we all went to the same school and the the coach was actually like my PE teacher and so we all we all got on and um we took me and another guy um down to United but there was I don't know if you know there's like two different centers so there's the the Carrington and then there's the cliff and where I used to live, my old my old house was literally Round the corner from the cliff. So one week there'd be sessions at the cliff, and then the other week there'd be sessions at the at Carrington. But obviously, because no one in my family drove, they had no availability to get like a lift there. So I sort of struggled with that side of it. And then um, from from United after the trials, I sort of just went back to my um, local team and just just to enjoy it again. Not that I was expecting to like get anything from United. But it was um, even even now when I look back, it was like the pressure that even certain parents would put on their kids. Like I remember mm. my mum just coming to the cliff because it was around the corner, so she could make it, and she just said to me like, "Just go, just go and have fun." And then I'm looking at other parents and the stuff that they'd say to the the child. It was like from an early age, you're already putting pressure on your child where with my mum it was always like it's always just like just go out there have fun and I I know that's how I play now like you just play with it, it smiles on your face and just and just enjoy it. And then I was that's when I got older and then from sixteen to eighteen I went to Burnley. That was like the development centre there. And then um, I think that's when it really hit me like this is an insight into what it really takes to be a footballer. Um that was when it hit me. Obviously, I knew naturally I had some sort of ability, but it was just like the little things that I never really was open to because, as 
as you just said, I was playing in the streets or just playing locally. And I never really knew, like, oh, like, this is what you actually need to be doing, like, day to day, how to live your life. And, um, yeah, so from, from Burnley, that, that was that experience, I feel like it was, it was a blessing because, like I said, it was, um, an insight for me to, to know what, what, what I needed to do to, to, to order to be a footballer and also playing against, like, the other, um, development squads that, such as you play Fulham and you had to travel down to London and, um, stay in a hotel. It was just like those little things just like, made you feel like you was a footballer but even though I wasn't getting money from it but it's just like the feeling of waking up in the hotel and the lifestyle and even though I wasn't getting paid or anything it was just like those little things just made me feel like I was that makes sense interesting interesting uh, can you tell us your favorite memory from your youth career what would it be <sighs> my favorite memory would be we got to the cup final and this is when I got uh some the United Scout was watching and I remember we were two 0 down and the coach he had so much faith. <laughs> he had so much belief in all of us. He was like, Don't worry, really, we're all panicking, we're all there, stressed, thinking we've lost the game, got to the final and then it wasn't even just like you know, in some teams you just have that one magical player, but in this squad like everyone was like everyone was so good. And I remember we were two 0 down and then we got it back to two two and it was the last it's like the last uh, minute of the game, the ball came over and I can see the keeper was off his line and I loved him. And obviously my mum was there, my stepdad, my sister, so I think for me that was probably like my my favourite memory as a child, like scoring that goal in front of my whole family and then obviously to win the final. So yeah, that's for me that's the special moment. What's your lowest moment and what's the biggest lesson you've learned? As a youth player, not just as a not just as a football player, but in terms of any childhood struggles, anything that you went through, and and would you have done anything differently? I'd say the struggles that I I went through in my childhood, obviously, um, you know, my mom had, you know, my mom had other kids to look after, so my household situation wasn't wasn't the best. Obviously, I was sort of bouncing from foster care to foster care so I was probably in and out of different different homes. The home environment wasn't fully it wasn't settled. But that that, that I think that played a part. Um but football wise I d I don't think um I think football wise that sort of was my way out. So that was I had stuff going on away from football and then when I went to football that was my enjoyment. So I can't really think of the time where in my child like in my youth career where I felt, oh, I don't want to play football. That was my love because I was distracting myself from what was going on mm. at home and mm. my at home life situation where with football, that was my enjoyment. That was what I loved doing. So it was sort of mm. my distraction from other things that were going on in my life. As I, as I understood, you are a street baller. Uh, tell us about how you were... Uh how you were using the street football uh, on the on the 11 side pitch like uh, are there any tricks you maybe found out that that can work on 11 side the pitch and uh, what's uh, have you been also coachable like many street bowlers are, are very hard to coach it's uh, hard for them to understand the tactics and then just my question to you is uh, if you had problems with that or it was smooth and easy for you yeah always like with practicing skills on the streets like for example even on the way to school we just be playing football and then like <laughs> I'll tell you a story in a minute but after school we're just on the way home like we'll just be playing football it was just all I knew and if, if I didn't get home by a certain time it was not hard to find me because there's only one place that I'd be in, <laughs> in, in the park playing football or I'd be at a friend's house so it was very easy for people to find where I was because I was just I was up to playing football and um, going back to what you said um, being coachable I think at the beginning it was um, it was hard for me to uh, I'd say to get used to certain things and understand why you do certain things for example if you're doing a possession drill and 
the coach is telling you, you know, take two touches, touch and pop it off. But me, I want to take touches because I'm, you know what I mean? That's the type of player I am. I want to take touches, I want to dribble. But in those possession games, it, there's no, there's, it's not about taking many touches. It's just about basically touch and pass, touch and pass. And then when you when you get into when you get into like a game now, you're already thinking, okay, in my half when you, when there's pressure and teams are pressing you, now you not now you know why. Okay, now you what what now you know why why he wants you to do that because when teams are pressing you and you're getting pressed, it's a thing where you're used to just popping off one touch pass. But then in the final third, you can be creative and you know you can express yourself. But as a street player. In like those possession drills, you, and you got two touches. It, it, it's hard for you because you wanna just you wanna dribble. You wanna you wanna that's that's what you're used to. But until I got older, I started to understand why why the coaches just want you to to take two touches instead of dribbling. Definitely. And what's your advice to street footballers? If they got on a trial, for example, an academy or something like that, what what would your take to be? What would your strategy be this time around? My advice to them would just just take your game. Like literally, don't don't try something you're not good at, or don't try to be something that you're not. Just do what's got you there in the first place, and that's what mm. I think many people when they go to clubs or when they go to certain places, they try to at like a different player but the player that got you there in the first place was the player that you should be and that's not that's not me saying oh you should change the way you talk or change the way you speak of course be polite be respectful but I'm talking about how you play on the pitch that got you there that's what you need to show and and sometimes it can be hard in football and it can be very difficult because there's a, there's a lot of things that go on down close doors that people don't understand so um, for, for young players that are you know that have things like trials, and you know they wanna they wanna go to teams and they're playing locally and the the, the street footballers. You can take you can take those attributes into a team. It's just about if you're willing to willing to learn and you know and and there's no correlation as well. Like you're trying to take what you do from playing in the cage or the streets to a pro team. It doesn't it doesn't fit in. It, there's no there's no correlation. It doesn't fit in. So you need to be able to adapt. That's that's what I say. Okay, so I hear you had uh, you have very good season so far. Uh, tell me what changes have you done to your life to to suddenly blow up, blow up? Like, did you find any any football hacks? Did you learn something that you never knew before? What would you say? Mm, I wouldn't I wouldn't say hacks, but I think the biggest thing that I've, that I've done I've become Muslim. So my, some people might say, "Oh, it's a hack," but for me. I feel like I've got to the point in my life where I've said to myself, I'm not going to do things my way no more. I'm going to do things God's way and trust Allah and do things Allah's way. And when you just, when you feel like, when you get to a point where you know that I've tried things my way and things don't work out the way you want to, not even just football, just in life. And, um, Yeah, so I think that for me has been a big factor in me being able to be more disciplined, being able to being being able to think straight, and um, just the just the beauty itself in Islam is just like it's just crazy. And you know the the, the whole situation where like they ain't telling you this in school, you don't you, they ain't teaching this, and you ain't hearing it in music because the all the things that are laughing about are bad. So. For me to get this information, it's like where else am I gonna find it? So it's it's um it's a thing where I wish that I I was known from it from early or I was born into that. But you know things are not meant to be like that because if it was, then everyone would just be religious or be Muslim. But I think for me, um yeah, that probably helped me the most and just being able to like refocus and. Yeah, and times when I was here, I just like question my ability or doubt myself. I just pray and just work harder, just try to be better than I was yesterday, or just try to be better than I was in training than last time. And I think 
that's all you can do as a footballer just try to be better than every day keep improving mm-hmm. yeah this is something like me and Pasha were speaking about in all the podcasts um, sometimes you've got to lose yourself to find yourself and yeah. the, so the one thing we've been doubling down on very massively is sometimes you've got to let it go to receive it all because if you, because if you, you hear that like if you if you're holding like a beautiful bird like that all the time and you're suffocating it, but you're never letting it go to kind of see the beauty of it flying away and then coming back to you, okay, then that means you don't trust yourself. It's an insecurity thing. So it's a that's where it's like it's, uh, Patrick's in. Go uh, funny enough, Patrick's in his start in his journey of finding God. And that's his goal this year. Um, he was in the exact same position as you. So um, this is not, this is Patrick's the same thing. He's done it the same way. Where like he's he's doing it his way, blah blah blah. He's trying everything and everything like that. Um, in the right way, of course. But we were saying this before. What's life when you're just serving yourself and your ego, but you're never serving your people and your community? So. That's definitely one thing we've taken a lot on. And that's something that we've seen a lot of guests on our podcast. They they are very they believe in a higher power. Uh, whether that's God, whether that's um the higher self, whatever it may be. Um they believe in something and that's something that we feel we see we see people with on a Premier League day to touch the grass, you know, point in the sky and everything. So it's not a coincidence. So yeah, um I'm glad that you found your path. Um and we hope that Patrick finds his own path as well, whatever it may be. Yeah, definitely. I feel like for for the new you to come out, the old you have to die. That means mm. and that's 100%. what happened. And that's what happened to me. And obviously Patrick, your journey is, you know, you you will eventually find you will find it it just it will just happen naturally. That's that's all I can say. It will just happen when you least expect it. Yeah, actually, that was my my next question. Like, what's your advice to a person that is open minded to to God and a person that is close minded to God? Like, how would you advise those people to find God? I think for for me, I've always had some sort of feeling towards God, and for for quite a long time. I was always trying to find God and I was always trying to go to church and it didn't really, I don't know, I can't, I, I can't explain it. it. It's something, for me, it's about the intentions of the heart of someone. So, for example, in the Premier League, you've got, say, for example, Bakaya Saka, he's a Christian player. For example, you've got the likes of um, Mo Salah, who's Muslim. So it's just about the, the intentions of the heart and if funny enough I was having this conversation with a good friend of mine the day and these players yeah they're always you go on their Instagram their their Twitter they have things in common so they're always praising their their God they're always you know on the pictures or Alhamdulillah or Bakar Saka always something about God something, it's always God related and even with their with their earnings for example you always see them doing things charities but most players, and I don't want to speak bad about other people, I don't think me, but they they don't put God first, and that equals them to not being able to push on in their careers. But when you put God first, and you serve God, it will just it will just do things for you that you, you don't even know that you wouldn't be able to understand. Um. So I think for people that are open minded towards, you know, God, um, learn and be able to not not care about what your family are gonna say or other people or your friends because only you know how you feel inside towards something. If that feels right, then do it. If you don't feel right or you fifty fifty, take time. There's no rush. Um I'm not saying, Oh yeah, do it when you're older, like because Eventually, you, you just never know because life is short. Um, but what I would say is just be 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 open minded and 
don't be close-minded towards other people and their religion. And what about somebody that is close-minded to God? So he's like, no, nah, God doesn't exist. Show me where he is. What would you well, do? I would say those? to them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say, okay, for example, I've said it before to people. I said, okay, my clothes. Who made clothes? They're like, what do you mean? I said, someone made this, right? They said, yeah. I said, that a person made it well, with, with, with materials. I said, go look outside. Look at the trees. Look at the sky. Look at the oceans. Who made that? And then they say, they don't know what to say. You know what I mean? They, 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 it's, like, it's like they know the truth, but deep down, they don't want to accept it. And that's fine, because that's you. I'm not going to judge you or your sins or whatever, because I don't, I don't want to do that. That's, that's down to you, what, what you're doing. But if someone has come to me and be like, oh, show me that God's real, and then I hit them with, oh, what I've just said to them, they, they don't really know what to say. It's like, how can you tell me God's not real? Because who made who made the clothes that I'm wearing? Someone made it, right? Just the same way someone made all these things: the sky, the trees, these things, the grass. Who, who else made it? Another human didn't. So we can't do that. <laughs> you know, we can't do that. We can produce. Women can produce. That's one thing that we can do. But we can't. We can't make those things. We can't do that. So mm. I just I just say that because that to me that is the truth mm -hmm. and you can't deny that. Mm. Um, but you know some people are going to be close-minded and that's fine. But just don't be disrespectful to others or just let let them be, um, let them pray, let them do whatever they're doing. But don't be like oh they're praying or oh, they're doing this because that's their belief and who are you to to uh, look down on someone that believes in a higher higher power because on the day of of uh on the day of judgment you know we, we will see like you know what i mean then they'll be they'll, it'll be too late for them but i don't want to speak about other people that don't believe in god because everyone's entitled to believe in whatever they want to believe that's why i think everyone's entitled to believe what they want but i know what i believe so that's what that's what i can say on that i would say like it gives you a sense of um morality as well because if you, there's so much messed up thing that's going around the world it gives me a sense of relief to kind of understand that there'll be a day of judgment where people are going to be held accountable for their wrongdoings unlike yourself how many people have you seen have been done unjust in this life throughout the whole life but for you to think they're not going to be held accountable it's just criminal but to have the religion to kind of justify that it kind of makes you find some sense of relief if that makes sense and not just that in a sense of like um let's say for example um they're saying oh what about all the killings all the wars that's going on blah, blah, blah. i'm like yeah that's not a reflection on god that's a reflection of uh, of our inadequacy as a human being because we're all sinners do you know what I mean? That's not a reflection on Islam. That's a reflection as on us Muslim being inefficient, being deficient, because we're all sinners. We're not perfect. Only God is perfect. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because at the end of the day, how are you going to justify what's good without the bad? If everything was good, you are going to be able to differentiate what's good. Do you get me? Mm. So it's like in, for every positivity, you need some negativity going on. And that's how life balances itself out. And like what God says in the Quran, but every hardship comes with ease. And that's just the way life is. But every low comes a high. And for every high, you've got to be grateful, enjoy the time, because it can be taken away from you as well. Um, so it's coming, it has to be in a state of uh, gratitude and abundance and stuff like that. And the only way to be like that is to stop seeking pleasure and just focus on yourself and focus on like all the people and serving other people and like giving charity, be a people's person, etc. etc. And then your higher self will have a higher purpose towards your higher self too. And so that's what I would say, like in terms of to close minded people as well. Okay. Uh, let's get back to football. Uh you're now in the uh, Welsh Premier League and uh tell tell me how uh, you cope with training twice a week. Like uh, as I understood, the, the teams in Welsh Premier League are training twice a week, 
So uh, only like TNS and uh, Connex Key are the ones that are training regularly. So uh, mm. how do you, how do you, what do you do the rest of the days and how do you prepare for the sessions when you have them twice a week? Just, just find your access on, on the days that I can. We see if with TNS and other things being full time or no, not full time. Um, obviously they're going to be much, much better, much sharper than us. So just you just have to use protect your time valuable, um, and just try to do little things that will benefit you, such as your recovery, sleeping right, eating right. Um, you know, obviously not training full time. It, it it can obviously it can be very difficult. You have work, you have other things, other commitments, and it can be um it can it can be a, it can be a bit hard, and especially if you're not if you're not playing, there's a, there can be a lot of um different performances and I'll be honest, you can you can lose your head. You can lose your head. Um so yeah, you, you just got you just gotta think you just gotta be strong minded and if you want enough then these things they won't they won't stop you. How do you prepare mm. for the games? What's your pre game routine? Just normal things really. I'm not like I'm not like superstitious in any way. I just do what I normally do, like wake up, have my breakfast just just do what I'm used to really just like get myself in a good mood um always try to warm up properly uh literally just just make sure I'm just like feeling good like make sure I'm not there's nothing I'm not rushing I don't like rushing if I'm rushing I feel like oh I'm gonna end up missing something or I'll leave something behind so I just to make sure everything's done the night before um so yeah that's that's it really obviously sometimes i might even sleep in but the thing with me is i don't even sleep late i just sleep long so like if i fall asleep at like 11 i could just sleep all the way in so uh, just just that that's it really just making sure everything's prepared and yeah ready for ready for the game so for people that don't know what's the standard of like the large premier league what what would you what level would you compare it to? They're the kind of question that a lot of people ask. Um, so what's your take on that? Yeah, the standard is a good standard. I can't really com uh, compare it to a standard in England, but I would say is that the top sixteen in the world prem are all probably round about. I'd say the top three conference north level, and then the rest are probably. Mm, to be honest, on the on the day, the, anyone can beat anyone, and I feel like in football that's that, that's anywhere. Um, like for example, TNS obviously, um, we played them Friday. We created most chances. We probably should have got more out from the game, but you don't get nothing from football if you don't put a ball in there. And um, yeah, we ended up losing one 0 but they 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 obviously they're full time. They're they top of the World Prem, they win the World Prem most most years, every year they won the World Prem for the last, I think, four or five years, I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, the, the the level is is tough, I would say the thing for me is the tempo, and the physically, obviously in, in England anyway, the physically is tough, but I feel like in Wales you can probably you can probably get away with certain things than than if you're playing England, you won't be able to get away with it. And the tempo is obviously, when you play against Cena, Conakry, the tempo is different because they keep the ball so much and they try to tie you out by keeping the ball, by having lots of possession. Um, but yeah, I think for me, that's probably been the, the only difference. Tell me, what would you what would you do differently in your career? So like, uh, is there anything you would change as, as a younger player to, to help you get on it? higher level quicker i probably know you will say i uh, find god quicker yeah mm. so so uh so, what's the second so, thing um the second thing i say I'd, I'd i'd try to not uh lose my head as much you know in football there's a lot of different performances and um there's a lot of things obviously even now playing in wales like a lot of things that could affect how you play. Like some players might speak Welsh. For example, I don't speak Welsh. 
So I don't know what they're saying and I don't understand the game from their point of view. But I'd say if I was to do things differently, I'd um I I'd say I'd I'd just try to be like more I w I won't say I wasn't open minded back then, but I was just I felt like I was in a way I had I had some entitlement, like I felt like I had I deserve it or like, like a chip on my shoulder sort of thing, like I not that I deserve it, but like because I've been through this I should get this or where life don't work like that. You know what I mean? Life don't work like that. No one's gonna just hand you a contract. No one's gonna say, Oh Patrick, come here, sign this piece of paper, you're gonna have a three year deal. No, it don't work like that. You have to earn it. And uh, until I got to obviously a certain age and it hit me, I was like, that's the harsh reality of, of, of life and football. You don't get what you sometimes you just you don't get what you deserve in it. But if you keep going, I vented it and you put God first. You know, um, you can you can be a superstar. Like a mentor, like a support ship from a young age, you think your pathway would have been different, someone to kinda of say if you fell off the track a little bit, push it into track a little bit, back into track a little bit. Would you say that would have helped you? Because that's what we me and Patrick have found a lot of people didn't have that support or mentorship network from a young age and that's affected mm-hmm. their pathway and they had to find things the hard way. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I agree. If I if I would have maybe worked on my mental state at a young age and probably would have dealt with things when I was younger, I think that would have helped me massively. But then I don't know. Then I'll, maybe it might have shaped me to the play that I am now. I don't think I would be... I think I'd go on the pitch. Then if I dealt with things, I think I'd go on the pitch more calm and more relaxed and not angry. And that's sort of my game in a way. So I, I look at it from both sides. Like maybe it would have been good for me because I would have been more relaxed and not stressed about other stuff. But then then it would have took away certain things on the pitch where I'm aggressive or if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd play with like, I'd play like I'm on edge. Like I'd play like, like when I was young, I'd just play with no fear. Like I don't even care who he is. Like, I don't care who my man is. Like, I'll just run it in like just just fearless and that's and that's probably helped me in a way to get to like a level but because I've not really um worked on like my mental side of it until now, until I'm older. It's like it's like it's like a backlog of stuff, if that makes sense. Mm. So uh, yeah, I think players, young players should definitely um should definitely do that and speak to people and not be afraid to talk about how they feel. We have uh, four minutes left, uh, so I'm forced to squeeze two questions in one. Uh, what's your advice to the younger generation? And uh, tell us about your plans for the future. What's your what's your uh, goals, what you want to achieve in life? My goals for the future, just to play football obviously professionally. I think obviously now, the, the age that I'm at, me being 24, I think the next, the next six years obviously take me to 30 and, and I said to myself like if I put God first in these six years like anything is possible I can I can, I can go on to have a I can, I can go on to have an amazing career or I can go on to to play in the world's prem for the next six years it's, it's down to me and um, mm-hmm. when I think of it like that I think it just makes it just makes me think um, you know obviously about about God and what I want to achieve within football, the, the the levels that I've set out for myself, and I know I can play at a certain level. Um, as long as I can live off football and I can, you know, I can give back to my family and I can look after them. I think for me that's that's the main thing. Um, what I want to achieve, but you know, in football, I think you all know here you only get a time frame in your career. From if you're lucky, maybe that ten years, maybe that, maybe even less. If you obviously if you get injured, but um, yeah, in the time frame that I do have, I'm gonna just try to achieve obviously what I've, my goals and what I set out myself. Um, but for the younger generation, I just tell them just just taste your dreams, like just just do what you love, and and obviously I know I'm going back to God again, but this is what this is what God showed me show me my, my gift and what I'm what I'm naturally good at and a lot of people they they're not necessarily doing what their gifts 
And I think once you do your gift and what you're good at, doors will just fly open that you don't even know. Um, so yeah, so I'll take the younger generation, just chase your, chase your dreams, man, just chase them and don't let no one or your family tell you different, right? Cause no one knows what you feel in here, in your heart, mm-hmm. cause no one, no one can feel that. Only you can feel that. So whatever you feel in there, just do it and go for it with 100%. And there's going to be days where you think, oh, I can't do it anymore. Like, I think everyone has those days and those days are the days that determine whether you either make it or not. Cause mm. if, if you, if you think, nah, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw in the towel and just call it a day. Mm. That's when it will never happen. That's when it, that's when it will, if you fully give up, the chances of you making it, it will, it will never happen. But if you keep going and, you know, you believe in yourself, there's always a chance there's always a chance mm. so yeah that's all I can say but thank you guys for having me on and it's been, it's been a pleasure I appreciate it we wish you good luck yeah, for man. the future to smash it uh, more in the Welsh Premier League and hopefully to see some good transfer thank you Patrick yeah. hopefully we can link up soon yeah, definitely hopefully. yeah definitely but listen Ryan okay we'll definitely have you in the future hopefully more Face to face podcast once it starts booming up, okay. Um, and then hopefully, you can your career will be full of blessings in terms of playing abroad and everything else, and uh, definitely picking up that professional game. Um, and we'll hope to see you in the top, inshallah. Inshallah. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.